Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We ask the God that you continue to establish us in your grace. And Father, we just thank you for your goodness, your mercy, for everything in our life. We acknowledge, O oh God, that only Yahweh is righteous. Only Yahweh is holy. And Father, we love you. And we ask, O oh God, that you continue to establish us in your grace, establish us in your goodness. We ask, O oh God, that you will cause us to know the deep things of your spirit. For 2,000 years, nearly 2,000 years, this book of Revelation has been sealed. And it is our privilege, Father, that in the days of the seven thunders, that it has been unveiled and revealed. And we ask the Lord that you give us once again upon our hearts and lives the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Grant that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, Father. That we may know the hope of your calling, the riches of your inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of your power towards us who believe. We thank you, Father. You are all in all. You are in us and through us. In you we live and move and have our being. Let your will be done, Father. Let your kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven. This is the one burning desire of our heart. That your kingdom come and your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. So establish your word, O God. Let your word be like a two-edged sword, piercing to the division asunder of soul and spirit. That your word will renew us, strengthen us, encourage us, and transform us. That we will grow from glory to glory into Christ likeness. Let your light so shine, Father, for each day that passes brings us one day nearer to the glorious church, one day nearer to the second coming of our Lord. Each passing day, Father, we want to be a passing day where we are even more transformed. We are even more glorified in Christ and Christ in us. We ask, O oh God, that all the fullness of Christ continue to be established upon our lives and that you continue to teach us your word and establish your word to our hearts and our minds. Grant us what Jesus grant, Father God, to the disciples on the way to Emmaus. Open our understanding to the scriptures and reveal your scriptures to us, even as you sit at the feet of Jesus. I may behind your cross, Father, that all may see Jesus and Jesus alone. Let your glory, Father God, be seen among your people. And we give you all the glory, the worship, and the honor. For unto you alone do we give glory, Father. Receive all the glory, worship, and honor. Receive all the love and adoration from our heart. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. Now, again, for those of you who are here first time, welcome. And uh, those of you who are regular here, I'd like to get this chart into your heart and your mind. We show again the chart that we have for, on the whole book of Revelations. Remember that the book of Revelations is not a chronological order. And uh, the events that are recorded. And uh, there are that we talk about the seven churches that we have covered. And if you need a foundation on the book of Revelation, look at uh, on our website and we have a PDF download, uh, Foundational Truth, Volume 14. And uh, uh, the basic teaching on the second coming of Jesus is there, plus a general outline of the whole book of Revelation is there. And most of the book of Revelation cover the seven years. Uh, except for the church ages, which uh, is chapter 2 and 3, which we have touched on. Uh, once you pass into chapter 6, which is the sixth uh, opening of the, of the seals, the seven seals, uh, you begin to see the chronology break down. Of course, since the seven seals are stated, we have seal number 1, the white horse, number 2, the red horse, number 3, the black horse, number 4, the pale horse, uh, and then number 5, we see when it's open, the souls under the altar, and these are the tribulation saints, those who died during the tribulation. And then the sixth seal, uh, the, the sun and moon were affected, and then there was uh, uh, Revelation 7, which is uh, involved also with the opening of the sixth seal, uh, the 144,000. 
and then you have uh, Revelation 8 when, uh, when the seventh seal was opened, there was silence in heaven. And then after the silence in heaven, you have the seven trumpets. However, we have realized that the seven trumpets are not chronologically after the seven seals because within the seven trumpets are things happening which cannot be after the seven seals because uh, it will be too near to the mid-tribulation uh, where uh, there is a mid-tribulation rapture of the Jews. We have the rapture of the church before the seven years and you have the rapture of the Jews uh, after uh, the mid-tribulation. Uh, mid and uh, of course, any Jews today who are part of the church, uh, the church age, they will be considered part of the church age. And they will be also taken as part of the church. And, uh, so there is a Gentile rapture and there is a Jewish rapture that has happened in mid-tribulation. And uh, that rapture takes place when uh, in Revelation 11, uh, verse 7 and 13, when the two witnesses, which is Enoch and Elijah, uh, are resurrected and they, when they are raptured, everyone is raptured too, including 144,000. And, uh, and all those who believe in their words and their witness. And uh, so when we see the seven trumpets, and we go back this section again, uh, as the seven trumpets are blown, you see in trumpet 1 to 4 here, uh, destruction on the earth. Uh, Revelation 8 was 7 to 13. And then uh, the fifth trumpet was in Revelation 9, verse 1 to 11. That's the first bowl. And uh, then you have the second bowl, uh, which is Revelation 9, also 1 to 12. The sixth trumpet, where the four fallen angels that are uh, at the moment in prison uh, in our locality near the Euphrates, but it is uh, just a geographical point for us. There is actually a spiritual point. Uh, there are spiritual points all over the earth. And so there is a spiritual point of imprisonment where uh, they are locked up. And uh, those are the four uh, archangels, fallen archangels that are, that are going to be released uh, during the sixth trumpet. And of course, uh, you do also have uh, the seventh trumpet, uh, uh, the seventh trumpet also, which ties to uh, the third world, Revelation 12, 12 and Revelation 12, 12 here and we already touched on that about uh, Satan being cast to the earth and we mentioned that Satan being cast to the earth is a several stage process something happens at the rapture as we are raptured, something happens to Satan and he's pushed down uh, towards the earth here but the finale of him being pushed down also is at this point here when mid-tribulation and he's completely uh, above. At the moment, he might be pushed to uh, the space above the earth. And uh, so all those are spiritual dimensions which coincide with physical dimensions. And uh, so you can see that the seven trumpets have to occur here. And uh, question, the main question one is because uh, during the, the time of the, of the wars, uh, when the bottomless uh, pit is open and the beast that comes out from the bottomless pit with all the evil cohorts of, e of uh, his uh, army behind him uh, that is the beast that destroyed the two witnesses or allowed to be destroyed allowed to kill the two witnesses it's mentioned by the way all this I'm quoting from the Bible nothing new added is mentioned in Revelation 11 that the two witnesses uh, were killed by the beast from the bottomless pit. And uh, since uh, the two witnesses in Revelation 11 prophesied 1260 days, divided by 360 is three and a half years. And so logic dictates that they have to be in this first half. And uh, so they perform their ministry here in the first half of the tribulation, which is about three and a half years. And uh, so they have to start here and then uh, complete it here. And obviously, it has to be within this point, which is same as the seven seals, uh, within this point here for the uh, bottomless uh, pig creature or beast to oppose them during this period. So your logical uh, uh, placing uh, interpretation has to fit uh, that uh, out outline. 
And the second main thing here is the woman uh, in the wilderness. And uh, that is Revelation 12. We all know that the child represents uh, our Lord Jesus Christ and the woman represents Israel. And uh, then the woman fled to the wilderness and the woman fleeing into the wilderness uh, is mentioned in Revelation 12. It's also mentioned in the book of Daniel how uh, Israel will flee to the wilderness area of Edom, Moab, and Ammon. Those are the three areas which the Antichrist will not go in, in the book of Revelation. Antichrist cannot go into those areas. In the book of Isaiah, it also talks about Christ coming and uh, it speaks about Edom too. Uh, when he comes, the people are in Edom. And as you know, the area of Edom, Moab, and Ammon are in the area that we call today Jordan, the country of Jordan, which is the east of uh, uh, the Jordan River, which once upon a time used to be part of the larger Israel. But today is an independent country called Jordan, and uh, the area of the wilderness is from Madaba, uh, all those regions that some of us have visited. So the woman... Uh, uh, runs to the wilderness, goes to the place there where Enoch and Elijah are waiting for them. And since the woman is mentioned, it also mentioned that she runs and the earth protect her for 1,260 days. Divide by 360, logic dictates that she has to be also in this first part here. And so, you can see that Revelation 11 Revelation 12 are not chronologically after Revelation 8, but they are here concurrent with Revelation 6 taking place as all the horses are released. So it's all concurrent. Uh, two ministers are concurrent here, Will, uh, woman and wilderness is concurrent here, and then uh, same with uh, what is happening to Satan being cast onto the earth. The third woe is here and it's also here. So concurrent things uh, taking place. So this is the overall. So far, we have been looking at Revelation chapter 11 to chapter 18, and we have been covering several uh, episodes of things taking place in the first three and a half years. Today, we will conclude the first three and a half years, the major events that take place. And uh, one of the things that we want to uh, make note of is, a is the rise here of the two witnesses, Enoch and Elijah, and obviously the 144,000, which is also part of these three and a half years, and uh, then the woman going to the wilderness, and whatever is happening in the spiritual realm uh, in Satan, uh, uh, to Satan. And uh, obviously, this point called the rapture is a very important demarcation point. The tribulation uh, happens after the rapture. And so for those of you who love theology, this is the pre-tribulation view. It's called pre-trib. And uh, in my Foundation Truth series, volume 14, I cover all three views. So I mentioned, you know, uh, 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 all the possible three views. But as the Lord has begun to reveal more and more things, we definitely uh, knew that uh, it has to be here. Uh, three tribulation. This is a major event. Now, why are we looking at this major event here? If the two witnesses and 144,000 are in this point here, okay, it's getting weaker here. Oops. Uh, at this point here, and uh, the Antichrist rises also in this three and uh, uh, half years, and then he shows his full color more and more. Uh, in this mid-tribulation uh, uh, rapture that is that it is obvious that they are not going to start what they want to do here, correct? It's not here that the 144,000 uh, they start looking for that. It's here that the 144,000 are sealed together with the two witnesses. And uh, Obviously, the 144,000 cannot be born during this time because it's only three and a half years. If you're born at this time, you only be three and a half years old. So, if the 144,000 are to function in this place here, they have to be born before that. If they are about 30 years old when the when uh, the rapture takes place, then obviously they have to be born 30 years before. 
If they are about 40 to 50 years old, then they should be born roughly about the same time as the Antichrist, whom we know is going to be born on 2015. Some of you might say, oh, how do you know all these things? Right? The seven thunders prophet has prophesied. And by the grace of God, this, uh, this revelation has been released. And the uh, church has been privileged uh, and honored to be able to uh, receive this revelation uh, from the seven thunders prophet. And we have been teaching a, a whole series on that. We have been giving revelation uh, uh, bit by bit gradually because we want to give it in line with the word. And uh, it's a, the revelation is given different from prophecy. Prophecy needs to be delivered. And the prophet said that he will deliver when there's a prophecy. But revelations uh, have to be given uh, as we are able to uh, digest and take uh, the word of God. And uh, so, uh, as far as we know, we are the generation that will see Jesus return. And uh, there are several prophecies for those of you who are uh, first time here. And uh, I can understand if you uh, have, a, have a questioning and a skeptical mind. And I encourage you to question by all means. And um, that uh, you have a skeptical and uh, mind. And it's good because be like the Berean Christians. Examine everything that is said in line with the word. If it's not in line with the word, reject it. If it's in line with the word, accept it. And uh, I was talking to someone on uh, Monday night about uh, coming of Jesus and the dates that God has given as to all the things that are happening. How 2004, the first prophet has been born. He's now in South Africa, about 8 years old. Uh, 2015, the Antichrist will be, will be born. And uh, then, uh, how the rapture is coming soon. And then I said, uh, there are certain signs that God has also given. And uh, there are two major signs as far as I know that uh, every skeptic can look at. Uh, one is the prediction of the uh, uh, five pieces of meteorites. Uh, it might be one meteorite coming into the earth and bring the five pieces. But five, five meteorites hitting Russia. And uh, if you all remember uh, that, and Shem, uh, if we have that picture of the meteorite thing, uh, we can show that. And uh, so, and also if you find the timeline thing, uh, we just briefly show it for the sake of those who might be hearing this for the first time. And also for a refresher for us. And uh, uh, only recently, Russia had a meteorite, right? And uh, it was hit by one meteorite, and that's a tiny one. But there will be... Uh, there will be uh, many pieces that will come and uh, two major ones two major ones will hit uh, uh, near two of the major cities in Russia and uh, okay here we are uh, wait, there's actually seven sorry one two three four five six seven is yes. uh, correction seven I keep thinking of five uh, actually the two main pieces are by themselves so it's two plus five so uh, let me tell you that scientifically, from the law of physics, even new, uh, even space scientists cannot tell you the exact spots where a meteorite will hit. They can only approximate. Think, even things that we track, like uh, some uh, long ago Skylab uh, or something was allowed to uh, come down, one of the space stations, they only roughly give a big rough area. No, pre no precise area. And, uh, so, uh, but these are very precise visions and, uh, given to the seven thunders prophet. And, uh, so the two main pieces are here because these are the spots where there are two fallen up angels. And then the other five smaller pieces are here, 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 and here. Now, if you don't believe this message, Around 2027, this will take place. And this take place, then remember there's another sign. In 2029, there's a prediction of a worldwide earthquake. That, uh, if we have that also, we can show the map on that. Take your time, Shem, thanks uh, to look for that. Now, here is where we tie back to the book of Revelation. Remember how I said that 
by the time the rapture takes place, the tribulation begins. So not only is God looking at the 144,000 now. Now, if the 144,000 are young people, then right now their parents are being worked on. Because those are important people to function during the time of the tribulation. Okay, uh, this map uh, is a map of a worldwide shaking an earthquake that takes place all the way from Turkey, uh, going through several countries. This is only a rough measurement, uh, all the way to China, and then uh, uh, another fault line, uh, and then uh, another fault line that uh, uh, that goes through through uh, the same place here where the 2004 uh, tsunami happens. Uh, there was a little earthquake there, and uh, can we look at the Gulf American side? Thank you. And then you remember the in California they're always talking about that fault line, uh, shake here, shake there a little bit, but no major thing. 2029, uh, this whole thing is going to be blown up. So it's like the whole earth shake, and you have a worldwide earthquake that goes uh, happens all over the world simultaneously. 2029, and uh, then these blue lines represent the ocean waves are going to be higher by about uh, uh, perhaps by 15, 18 feet or so, and the whole world will look different because. The earth will move, some land go down, some land go up. England goes, America uh, is basically uh, natural disaster, and then there are other predictions of war, there are very specific predictions. And I was talking to fellowshipping with some, uh, some people who, uh, who, uh, who uh, uh, some Christians uh, on, um, on, on Monday after I came back uh, after doing visitation. And uh, so I said, look, these are very precise warnings. And uh, so the whole worldwide thing, and then we move towards here, uh, there will be tsunamis caused by all these earthquakes, and the 2004 tsunami will again come forth, and then uh, and we have uh, the biggest tsunami is this one, and uh, it's uh, so high, it's nearly the, at the epicenter, it's probably the height of about uh, uh, 100 story building. And um, so by the time it reach uh, some of these areas like Singapore and all those things, it will be, um, uh, it might be 50 stories, 30 stories, we do not know, but still as destructive. And millions of people are going to die. Now this, and this, I, I told every skeptic this, I said, look, if God told Noah a flood was going to come, and he did not warn the world, it would have been his responsibility. And if God told him a flood were coming, and let's say if God, if he heard wrongly, and there was no flood, no harm done, he just looks, he just lose faith, that's all. Right? And uh, when you have a message like that, you have to tell the world. Because if, you've got only two choices. If this message is false, well, no harm done, we are the one who lost faith. And we will say, hey, we were wrong, right? But, if it is true, and we didn't tell, God help us on the judgment day. <laughs> Can you see the point? So, when you have two choices, the best choice of two is still to tell. Because you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And remember, I have a scientific mind, so I always look from the skeptic's point of view. I understand every skeptic and every unbelief. Which is why uh, uh, in, in our church, COG, in our church, the principle is this. If I tell you to jump, I want you to ask me why. Uh, in, I, I heard one mega church uh, pastor say, if I tell you to jump, you ask me how high. I don't believe in that. If I tell you to jump, you got to tell, ask me, why must I jump? Because you need to know the reason. You need to know the biblical basis. Why should I jump? And uh, what's the benefit to me? What's the benefit to others? How does it impact everything? You need to understand what you're doing. This is a time when we need to raise uh, the mature church. Ephesians chapter 4. Where every church member must, have, must know God. Every church member must have the knowledge of the faith and uh, must know their God and know what they are doing. So that even the Bible tells us in Hebrews 8 and Hebrews 10 that 
We don't have to tell one another, know the Lord, because we will all know the Lord. That's the church coming out from kindergarten, the church coming out from primary school, the church coming out from secondary school, the church now going to university. Glorious church, where we all learn to know our God, where we learn to hear God, we learn to read the Bible, interpret the Bible, we learn to uh, uh, understand the scriptures, and uh, as much as we know how, and by the grace of God, and by the, by the grace of Him giving us the spirit of uh, revelation and understanding, to understand the word in our time. Now, all these are, are, are predictable. Now, here's where we tie up to uh, what's going to happen. Look, there are several major things we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, having uh, laid down all these things now, there's also new land going to appear here in 2029. Uh, and this part is the world going to slightly go higher. And New Zealand uh, is going to no more be two islands, going to be one island with a bit more land added towards the uh, Australian side. And uh, so these are very detailed predictions. Now we can close that file. And uh, do we have that file? Ah, yes, we have. So thank you, Sham, you found this. Ah. So this is our timeline. Notice we have approximate dates. We date from the day uh, Pergamos victory, 9th of February 2012, when Pastor David went to uh, Pergamos. And uh, that was there that uh, the, the glory of the Lord came forth. And uh, Satan was dethroned from, uh, from the earth in a sense. And he was taken by surprise too. And uh, then uh, on around 8 August 2012, we were in uh, Mukawe, which is uh, uh, near Madaba. And uh, that was uh, a wonderful time. Then on 14 November 2012, there was a revelation of seven thunders. That was a holy night. And I have gone back again and again to rehear the seven thunders. And uh, it's holy night. There are more things to be revealed in the seven thunders, which is why uh, Pastor David is going on this uh, phase three, pray for him. And he's going to drop by uh, Patmos, the island of Patmos, where he will receive more revelation on the seven thunders. There are more details that need to be downloaded. And uh, so there are more revelations, more, more things. But already, there's so much revelation. And uh, we are giving it drips and pieces uh, because we are, pre we are also in a preparation phase. And uh, so from uh, November uh, 2012 onwards, there's a period of seven years. Uh, we count seven years, seven years, seven years. And that's where we count to the beginning of the decade of war in 2027. Uh, right on with a short period of peace and all down the line and you notice we are measuring a countdown time and here's the thing okay uh, the details of this you can look at the rapture series we have a series of rapture that we only teach on all night prayer and we will get back to that series soon and uh, now now we're in the touch of the book of revelations and uh, now uh, here there are major events we bring the chart again of the book of Revelations that uh, all timing measures from Pergamos victory and from the seven thunders and uh, so Satan and the Antichrist is going to start ruling during the tribulation Enoch, Elijah and 144,000 are going to start witnessing and immediately after the rapture uh, Israel proper are going to follow uh, you know, Elijah and 144,000 uh, and go to the wilderness. So all these major events are going to take place immediately after the rapture. It should be obvious to every one of us that they cannot do the preparation here. Guess where the preparation is? In our time. In our time. And... Uh, we have only roughly about 50 odd years to the rapture. That's all we have. And uh, as I was sitting talking to uh, a good Christian brethren in fellowship with them, uh, updating them on, uh, on all the information that is thus far, and, and, uh, and because uh, these are like um, uh, and, and we're talking to people who are educated, these are you know, doctors and 
philosophers and, and all these. Uh, and um, so we're not uh, people who, who are skeptical and who uh, use their, mi their mind to analyze things. And I appeal to them this. I say, look, even let's say if Jesus is coming in 200 years, would it not be obvious that whichever generation that is the generation to see Jesus coming, whether it be us, whether it be another generation 100 years down the road, or another generation 200 years down the road, whichever generation it is, wouldn't it be acceptable that God will reveal to them supernaturally more information? The answer will be yes. God cannot leave us in the dark. If Jesus really is coming, in our time, in our generation, and within several decades, whether it be our, be, be our generation that is privileged or the next or the next or the next 100 years, wouldn't it be necessary that by the grace of God, God has to download more information? Or are we going to go blah, 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 blah and get raptured? Right? And the church is not perfect yet. You know, we are still you know, half, half in the world, half in the kingdom of God, and you know, half living in sin, half living holy life. You know, surely God is not going to come for that kind of a church. And uh, revival has been predicted on and on and on again. And the most important thing is there has to be. But all revelation will always submit to the same basic rule. It will be in line with the word of God. It will not contradict the word. It will always glorify Jesus. It will always obey the basic rules of the Holy Spirit. And uh, it will always be in line with Christian principles. So all the basic things have to pass the test. And finally, you know, as we look and uh, uh, whether you deem our claim to be false claim or true claim, with all these things that are being revealed, and your next question would be, if God is to reveal this, how come He only reveal to so few people, why not to the whole world? As we have said, between 2022 to 2000 and, uh, 2026, before the tsunami in 2029, God will give us a platform to announce to tens of hundreds of thousands of millions of people this same message. So it will be, except that now, we are still only in beginning stage. We are only in phase one, phase two, just finished. Phase three. Remember what is phase one, phase two, phase three? They are training phases for us. We are still training. We ourselves don't think we are ready. You know, don't talk about uh, 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 the world is ready for the message or not. We are not ready also to deliver the message. Uh, honest, honestly, uh, we are not ready yet. Uh, uh, we need to absorb more. We need to pray more. And uh, we need to you know, get our lives tighter into holiness. We need to walk closely with God. Uh, we are not ready yet. We are still in training phase. Phase 1. We just finished phase 2. That's phase 3. And uh, so that's also the other reason. And then uh, your next objection would be, what should God reveal to you? Why not God just choose some mega church right now and straight away? That one, I don't know. You've got to go and ask God. <laughs> right. I don't know. You know? Uh, why, why, why you should choose uh, you know, uh, uh, us who just a tiny little group, you know, almost like you know, about three, four times bigger than some average uh, home group, and we're just starting off. And uh, if you ask me why, I say, you know, uh, you got to ask God that question. And uh, so, uh, but one thing is, we are committed, we are firm, we want to be faithful. Uh, we are definitely a prayer branch. In no other church do you have nearly 100% of the people in all-night prayer. Right? All-night prayer, uh, you got nearly about 50 over when it's big, right? when most of the people come. Even in Sydney, we're just starting off, uh, almost, uh, almost everyone who comes to Sunday comes for all-night prayer. Uh, there's no other zeal like this. 
And uh, in most churches, you call for prayer, you only get 1%, 10%. And uh, so uh, that's, I believe, the grace of God and the mercy of God that He so uh, find, a, find us at the right place at the right time. We were then praying, and God says, okay, use this vessel. So there we go. But uh, looking back at the book of Revelations, here's the thing. Everything starts after the rapture. So the, there will be parable, parable of things happening here. And, uh, and let's look first at the, the negative side. Okay. This is a white horse that represents uh, the Antichrist starting to his rule. Now let's move back, move forward this uh, Shen and Q to see the part before the rapture. Because we're going to close with that. What happens here has to relate to that. Yeah, okay. So we roughly not on the same time scale here. Uh, we say that the beast has, is born in 2004 and Antichrist will be born in 2015. And our Seven Thunders, a special one, I'm still waiting for Melchizedek and, he, and Ruth to come with a t-shirt for Seven Thunders Prophet. <laughs> That's our Seven Thunders. Uh, next time when you all you know, go with him or something, you wear the same t-shirt. Right? I think the color must be orange. Right? So, and, uh, so, yeah, Seven Thunders and then so we have uh, the Antichrist will be born in 2015 here. Yeah. When the Antichrist is born, the number of sin and rebellion is the number 6 and the number 13. When the Antichrist is born, there will be periods of 13 years counting. Because they will be here, here, here. And from 2015, the first lot of 13 years is the time after the release of the two fallen angels in 2027. That's why I show you the chart just now. That in 2027, when the seven pieces of meteorite with the two largest hitting where uh, we circle, where, the, where the, there are two fallen angels at the moment, they are long there. Now these are not in the book of Revelation. Uh, the Revelation has a four at Euphrates. And of course, you might say, hey, this is extra biblical revelation. Oh, fine, you know. Whether uh, it doesn't contradict the Bible so far. You know? The Bible didn't, you say, oh, the Bible didn't say there's angels, uh, not fallen angels, lock up there. True. The Bible also said didn't have. Uh, did, uh, the Bible didn't say have. Well, the Bible also uh, didn't say didn't have. <laughs> right? So we're still draw. And uh, so. Uh, so it's a choice of which one you want to believe. So uh, I, I don't find any contradiction on that. And uh, so uh, the first group of 13 years brings you to the place of 2028. 2015 plus 13 is 2028. Now, because some of us are going to be alive, in fact, I believe all of you are going to be alive <laughs> in 2028. You will live to see that. And, uh, and the world will shift. When the two fall these two fallen angels are the ones that are bound from Noah's flood time. You can imagine how evil the world was before Noah's flood. That God has to destroy the world. That same evil and wickedness is going to come back. We are not going to have the good old times that we used to have. We're not going to have those days like the 20th century, you know, the Christian faith. Oh, we're not going to have those things anymore. The world will shift. And there will be periods of 13 years. And so there is a first 13 years brings us to the point of the release of the two fallen angels. Close to the point. That's 2028, just after the release. And uh, then the second group of 13 years, when 2028 plus 13 brings you to uh, 2031, correct? 2031 is another evil demarcation point. And then from 2031, you add another 13, brings you to 2018. Okay, thank you very much to stay awake. Eh? <laughs> 2043. So there's another demarcation point of evil. 
and then 2043 plus 13 2,000 and... Ah, yes, correct, 41. Thank you. And then 2,041 plus 13? 2,054. That is a period when uh, uh, there is another period uh, where there's a shift of evil. So evil will be allowed to increase. There are evil in this. Now, not to worry, light will also increase. The glorious will increase. But the increase of the evil is by 13 year gaps. The number 13. His number is 666, six, six, but it's 13 year gap. And, uh, okay, let's give it a figure. Let's start all over the content again, all the mathematicians. <laughs> right. 2015 to 2028. 2028 to 2041. 2041 to 2054. 2054. Now, the church will be the glorious church, but evil will be very evil. It will be like the Bible predict light against darkness. And then 2054 plus 13, 2067. 2067. Now, I have not given any days for the rapture and all those things at all, right? But I, I always give round figures that you will do some guessing. Now, to that, that next period is on or close to the tribulation period. Actually, it's close to the mid-tribulation period. There is a demarcation point when evil increase. I've been looking at those days very carefully and realize why 2015 is so important that he cannot be allowed to be born earlier nor later see God is still in control and uh, when he comes forth and, uh, and when he comes forth uh, is the measurement of every 13 years evil increases increases until it reach the highest point in mid-tribulation when evil takes over the earth completely after Enoch, Elijah, and 144,000 are taken away, evil takes over the world for three and a half years. God permits that. Now, I say I will give the bad news first, right? So, that's the bad news for the world, period of 13 years. But here's another interesting good news. Uh, Pastor David, our seven thunders prophet, his cycle is 13 years. Some of you that, hey, why is he 13 years? And because 13 years should be obvious to you right now. What the seven thunders is specially called for? It is called to restrain the work of the Antichrist. Can you see that? So there's that's why he's going on all these phases are very important. Phase one, phase two, phase three, and then later phase four is a different dimension. But we need to complete phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 all properly. We cannot have room for error. And, uh, and whatever work the seven thunders prophets to do, he has to seal the work against the work of the spirit of Antichrist, which we all know from John, the epistle. First John already said the spirit is at work. And uh, when, uh, when Paul wrote Thessalonians, he also acknowledged that the spirit of the Christ is at work. And uh, so remember that demarcation point of working that is there. At the same time, so we talk about how the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be aligning different places and different countries. And that will tie it to tie the, the Antichrist. You see, by the time the rapture takes place, he starts ruling. So he has to position everything the way he wants. So position, uh, especially uh, for him, it will be two areas. One will be the ten toes. Okay, he has to position himself ready for the ten toes. Uh, let's look at the book of Daniel. See, we are tying all back to Revelations. In the book of Daniel. 
the Antichrist will rise from one of the ten toes. And uh, so the ten toes position is very important. Chapter 7, verse 23, 24. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. And uh, if you remember, uh, this uh, four kingdom, the vision of the four beasts that were there, the first beast in chapter 7, verse 3, look at chapter 7, verse 3 of Daniel. And four great beasts came up from the sea, each different from the other. In verse 4, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man and a mansa was given to him. That's the Babylonian Empire. The second beast in verse 5, suddenly another beast, a second like a bear, it raised up on one side and three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. Thus, they said thus to it, arise devour much flesh. That is the Middle Persian Empire. Then in verse 6, after this I looked and there was another like a leopard which had on its back four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads and dominion was given to it. Now this four beast was dreadful and terrible in verse 7 now. That's the fourth beast which is the Roman Empire. So Babylonian, Middle Persian, Greek and the Roman Empire. Now after the Roman Empire, there's a gap. We are in the gap between the fall of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire went through several stages. At first, it was uh, under uh, uh, Caesar and uh, the Caesars, and then it became the Holy Roman Empire, and then it became the Holy Catholic Empire, uh, ruled by the Pope. But everything uh, has one thing in common. In the fourth beast, Rome was the capital. Take note of that. Rome was the capital. And now, uh, then it says here, it was A. I was considering the horns. There were ten horns. And then another little horn came out. It was A. Coming up among them, before of whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots. We all know Bible prophecy and how many books have been written about the revised Roman Empire, what we call the RRE. We know the Roman Empire, it got three stages. It went through uh, under the Caesar, then it became the Holy Roman Empire, which uh, with, with North and uh, with East and West. Then it became more like the Holy Catholic Empire under rule by the Pope, who also happened to rule from Rome. And uh, then suddenly we entered the modern period. And like a, like a breath of fresh air, a modern period. And, uh, and in our modern church era, many writers, many teachers, and many uh, who have the gift of prophecy have tried to predict the Antichrist. They have tried to uh, surmise when the RRE will come about, the Revised Roman Empire. So when the European common market came into being, and it's formed, they say, oh, that's part of it, and all those things. Indeed, it is part of it. And if you all remember the Seven Thunders uh, uh, prophecy, that uh, there were ten, I'm going to get this right, black tigers with grey stripes. Right, those of you remember where I keep changing the color of the tigers, <laughs> make sure you get the right color. And uh, there were ten eyes looking. At the, at the 20 dogs that came from east to west. Uh, there was a world map, and on the world map, uh, imagine just now you see the world map then just now, and uh, they were, uh, I've always been looking back at it, and uh, since we have the map, let's might as well bring the map for the sake of those of you who uh, say, which map, what map, where, how, where. Alright, here it is coming up for you. And, um, Okay, here's a map, and here, ah, oh, that's good. So, um, they were, uh, what uh, 
uh, past the daily store were 20 dogs coming, uh, coming, uh, and uh, then coming to this area, he saw 20 dogs, and uh, in the seven thunders, and then uh, there were 10 tigers, uh, uh, there was a serpent coming from here to here, right, and then uh, the serpent's head came and broke off here, and then there were 10 pairs of eye watching, and then the 10 tigers uh, leapt on the leapt onto the serpent, and then uh, then the uh, then the head flew off to here, and then the 20 dogs came and ate the head, and they wanted more of the serpent, so they came all the way here. And these are all again visions, like Daniel's vision, right? When you look at the vision of the seven thunder, it looked like Daniel's vision of animals here and there. And uh, subsequently, uh, later on, God revealed that the 20 dogs were 20 warships and they belonged to China. And uh, they were 20 ships, 2 or aircraft carrier, uh, 18 destroyers. And they came towards this direction, 2 were destroyed. One is an aircraft carrier, one is a, a destroyer ship being destroyed, and then they lean back all the way back. And we have details of that and all those things. You see, what we are talking about are not like guessing game. It's not like like roughly here, maybe here, maybe. These are exact predictions, exact things you're either 100% right or you're 100% wrong. There's no halfway about this. And uh, so, so we, we sort of uh, not offer and say, this is what the Lord showed. And it's up to you not to respond. Is this of God? Is this not of God? What, how do I organize my life? The thing is this, if it's really the end time, or we all better buck up and realize that the world is not going to be the same. In fact, with the tsunami, Singapore, we only got 16 here, 16 years left. Tsunami is 2029. So if you're just buying your property, whether this whole three whole no difference now. <laughs> you cannot finish it. <laughs> so and, uh, you know, 16 years left oh, of this land. And uh, so uh, then, what we see here is the 10 pairs of eyes, and the 10 pairs of eyes were located in this place. Now, based on their location, even though the RRE, the Roman Empire, covered this whole expanse, including the Middle East and all this area, but based on the fact that these were located here, no doubt it might be like a conglomerate of organizations. Uh, but the main ten kingdoms that influence them are in here. In here. We have already located at least some of these countries. I think there were three that we couldn't locate. And um, so we located at least uh, some of the countries there and we listed in, inside that. But we know the three countries of the ten toes. France, Germany and England. Now, England will go under the sea during the 2029 uh, worldwide uh, earthquake and tsunami and the worldwide shaking. And uh, there is a Bible verse on the Lord shaking the earth one last time. That's in the book of Hebrews. But it, you can interpret it as a spiritual shaking and uh, Others can interpret as both a spiritual shaking and also a physical shaking. When the Lord said in chapter 12 of Hebrews, verse 26, Yet once more I shake not only the earth but heaven. He said, why is that happening? Because around 2027, 2028, based on the 13 year timeline of the enemy, and 2027, based on our seven years timeline, uh, when the whole earth shakes, heaven is also shaken. So each time something is being pushed back from the enemy, from the, uh, the fallen uh, universe, uh, worlds, that they're, they're being pushed back. And, uh, and as a push back, of course, when you push something together, it becomes more compressed and there's more like more energy at first. So that's why it seemed to be more evil on the earth because they're being pushed in the direction of the earth. Suddenly, you know, the, the two fallen angels are also released uh, in that time. And uh, so we realize that 
the first major point that is important is to note that in this whole region here of the ten toes or ten horns in a different part of Daniel or the ten tigers as seen by the seven tigers prophet is located here and I believe that the center of the ten has to be the same place as the fourth empire in the Bible, Rome. So that is an important place and point to pray. And uh, then the second point that is important is this area, Russia. And uh, why? Because do you know that Megiddo has many battles and the word Armageddon uh, been used in our English languages as the last of end time war uh, is there are like a, several parts a, a natural part uh, and another natural part and then there's a two future parts okay let's show here in the book of Revelation we're still in the book of Revelation chapter 16 verse 16 it talks about the Antichrist gathering together. Acts 6, uh, uh, Revelation 16, 16, that is. And they gathered them together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. Armageddon. Now, Armageddon in a sense means, you know, the mountain of Megiddo. But there's no real mountain there. It's more a place that people build up. A place where people build up area of Megiddo. Megiddo, if you check in the Bible, has been the scene of many battles. You search on the internet, in the Israel, all that, Megiddo is always like a way that people have to, the armies have to go through there when you want to attack Israel. Now, the battle of Armageddon, and uh, uh, for those who are young ones, Bruce Willis is not in this show, and uh, the battle of Armageddon, in uh, chapter 16, verse 16, uh, has to do with the Antichrist gathering all his forces against our Lord. And that is the Antichrist. But you notice, at the end of the book of Revelation, there's another battle. And this one is the battle of Gog and Magog. In chapter 20, at the end of the 1,000 years. In verse 8. When the thousand years have been expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, God and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. And God and Magog, incidentally, is mentioned, mentioned in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37 prophesied the return of Israel. Ezekiel 38 talk about God and Magog attacking Israel. Hey, it's in your Bible, attacking Israel. And then in, uh, in uh, chapter 39, God's armies were destroyed. And Russia is like, more like Rosh, but it involved God and Magog. When you check God and Magog, it involved part of the Orient, uh, uh, European continental area. And uh, so the question is, Hey, how many Armageddon battles, how many Megiddo battles, how many God Magog battles are there? Tiga. Three. One, the literal one in the Bible. Small little things that take place. The second one, when the Antichrist leads the battle against Christ, of which Christ will consume him by uh, the breath of his mouth. And third one, at the end, called the Battle of God and Magog. See, it happened several times. Strange that it happened over several times. At least three times as far as we, we, we are concerned. If you accept that there were some historical battles that were close to whatever the Bible people predict at that time. Otherwise, you say, oh, it's all future. Then there's two in the future. And uh, then we, as we look, we realize that all that the Antichrist is doing has to actually 
uh, start from 2015. Now you know why phase three ends in 2014. Because it's very important. We are still in the training phase one. Phase two we just finished. I officially finished in September, so we can still do a little bit of things. And then phase three comes. So we have to uh, really press on into these things of God. And by the time the Antichrist is allowed to show up, things have changed. We all have to be at a higher level spiritually. Every one of us. Your grace period ends in September 2014. Not only for us, for every Christian in the world who haven't even heard this message. We're not sure how we're going to get that message to them. We put it on the internet and we, we will try. I'm still praying about how to write that message on the uh, end times to put it into the blog because uh, not everybody gets into the message. But, but there is uh, like a, a whole shift spiritually in the world in 2015. So we got these two years, 2013, 2014, to get ourselves ready for the shift. We are privileged to be part of it. Some people ask me, uh, now, how does that privilege you know, come? Uh, how, uh, how, how is it that this privilege function? It's like this. On the day of Pentecost, there were only 120 disciples in the upper room. All the 120 were privileged to be part of the witness when the Spirit came down. After the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, anyone, anywhere can have the outpouring of the Spirit, which they had. Cornelius had the outpouring of the Spirit in Acts 10, and they have another refreshing of outpouring in Acts chapter 4 when they were persecuted. And in Acts 3, they grew uh, after the message uh, to 3,000 people. Right? Uh, 2,000 and then uh, in Acts 2. And then after the healing of the miracle, the number came to 5,000 people. And then it says that they multiplied. Right? Multiplied minimum times 2. Multiplied cannot times 1. So obviously, minimum they would have been 10,000 strong. Uh, if they multiply by 3, they would be 15,000 strong. And then in Acts 6, when they appointed the deacons, it says they multiply some more. So uh, more multiplication. So there will be probably the church uh, in Jerusalem might have been 50,000 strong. 50,000 strong would be bigger than any mega church you have at the moment in, in Singapore. And, uh, uh, so you can imagine that the, every single one of them will have to ex receive the baptism in the Spirit. But, and they may speak with tongues and operate the gifts, but only 120 of them got to experience the first time. See what I mean? So your privilege, when you hear this message, and you understand these messages, and this end time is to be part of the 120. So be part of the 120. And guess what? Actually, over 500, 500 over people were given the message. But only 120 turned up. Of course, we know that online we got thousands of people listening to us. So those of you who cannot be here are include you too. Right? We got, we got uh, people in Canada who are considered part of church, people in US and all this. Uh, also, we refer to you as 120. Thank you very much. See, I haven't forgotten you. And uh, Australia too. So, we know that over 500 people saw Jesus in his resurrection. And the same message will be conveyed to them, say, Terry in Jerusalem, under you be endured with power for on high. They must have been told to wait in Jerusalem to pray. And what were they doing? Waiting. They were not waiting, like waiting for a bus. You know? They were waiting, they spent time praying. Many prayers, all night prayer, waiting on God. And uh, in the fullness of time, the Spirit comes upon their life. Your privilege is to be part of the 120. Because the day will come when there will be 
thousands and ten thousands and hundreds of thousands which will be privileged to be part of the work of God. Everything big has to start small somewhere. That's why people say, hey, you know, how does dinosaur get into uh, Noah's Ark? No one, no one died to carry the big dinosaur. <laughs> you know, you think he brought two uh, Bacchiosaurus and go boom, 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 and then they step on the Ark. <laughs> no, carry one baby dinosaur, you know, maybe two eggs, one egg, or something like that. That's good enough. <laughs> and uh, say, what, a dinosaur in the Bible? Yeah, the, the Bible word Leviathan is a sea dinosaur. And uh, Behemoth is a land dinosaur. So those are the dinosaurs uh, in the Adamic period. So we have uh, uh, all these uh, things that we see that we brought before you here. What about Gog, Magog, and Armageddon? Which means that the second important thing is Russia in the end time. So those of you who are believers in God, everyone will pray for Israel, pray for Israel, pray for Israel. Okay, okay. Good. Continue to pray for Israel. The book of Psalms, it tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But for the end times, pray, you know, uh, and, and, and cover uh, 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 Rome in prayer, cover Russia in prayer, so that uh, whatever forces need to be there, and pray for the angels that are working in Russia, pray for the angels that are working in Europe, especially Rome, so that God will strengthen them to do their work, to prevent what needs to be prevented, to hold back what needs to be held back, and to release what needs to be released. So those are the two important points to pray when you look at the, uh, what the Antichrist is planning. Now it's obvious, isn't it, to you? That if the Antichrist had to conquer three of these ten nations, this is a big target for him, correct? And it has to take place at the tribulation time. So obviously he must position himself within these next five decades to take over this area. And this area, Rosh, involving part of God, man God, but mainly influence here. It's also important, and I'm sure there are good Christians there too, and we thank God there are also areas of refuge there. Also, another area of include in your prayer. But for the good side now, remember the preparation, the 144,000. The 144,000 are not just going to appear out of nowhere. They are going to be born during these next 50 years. Uh, the details have not been revealed about how old they are or what their ages are. But this is what I believe. Just like in uh, China, which we just came back from, where the holy Rakhael, uh, Archangel, uh, brought forth 6 million babies. And all for the end time destiny. I believe there will be a time when the 144,000 Jews will have to be born, specially chosen. And if they are not alive yet, then their parents are alive. Right now, if the 144,000 are third generation, then their parents are now second generation. Which is none of you here because none of you are Jews. <laughs> I don't know whether some of you say, praise the Lord, whatever it is, because, because this group has to be a special group by themselves. And uh, these 144,000 are specially chosen and they literally, now we talk about 144,000, they literally do not get married. They are exactly like what the Bible says in the book of Revelations. They give themselves to the work of God because they go only three and a half years to finish their work. Do you notice that their timeline is like Jesus' timeline? Jesus got three years to finish all his work. And do you know Jesus also never got married? And uh, don't believe the 
know, the other false uh, things that, um, what was that? Ah, the Da Vinci Code or something. And, um, and um, I had a look at the book. That book is in one of my library just for critic, uh, for to critic it. Because when, uh, when, 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 people, when people ask me, I get to actually re re look at it to judge, all right? You have to be first hand. So I had a look at it. And uh, number one, the Da Vinci Code, is, uh, it's a book written as a novel. No, it is not really supposed to be a true story. And uh, number two, it is based on a manuscript that is based on another manuscript that is based on another manuscript that is based on another manuscript down the line. And uh, so they, they, they never, never got to the whole source. So if a manuscript is old enough, people think that it's legitimate. Uh, too bad they don't realize that we in the Bible we really wrestle with exegesis in the Bible as a which manuscript is right, which manuscript is wrong. That's why we came out with only 66 books in the Bible. And uh, do you know there are more than 66? The thousands of apocrypha that are not included in the canon. Uh, Christianity has already gone to its process of uh, which to include, which to exclude. And, uh, but the world history doesn't have any sort of canon of what is the true history. Uh, thirdly, the, the Da Vinci code that this person picked to unlock, say, well, how does Leonardo Da Vinci come in? All it started is a painting by Da Vinci of uh, the Lost Supper. And by the way, that Lost Supper is not exactly the Lost Supper. They were not sitting on a table as, as we saw from the Seven Times Prophet. They were actually sitting on the floor. And, um, and so, and uh, waiting for someone else to draw. And uh, someone else to draw. I have it in my bundle, carry it all the time. Uh, waiting for someone to draw the real Lord's Supper. The real Last Supper. Maybe one of you, second generation, you know, rise up, your artist. And uh, I got the detailed description. Only on this download, we have the New Testament download. And we put where Matthew was sitting, where Philip was sitting, uh, Peter, James, and all that. Went to quite details with the seven thunders. Because, uh, and then we even mentioned uh, how high were the windows, and where the light was, what color was the, um, uh, the carpet they sat on. We got all these details waiting for some painter to paint the real Last Supper. Your name don't have to be Da Vinci. It can be Tan Arthur, Tan Akau, also can. Right? And uh, so, and, uh, and uh, so, why you got a new uh, Habakkuk A? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Habakkuk Te. Who uh, loves Habakkuk Te? Right? <laughs> and so, and uh, so, uh, I didn't know Habakkuk loves Habakkuk Te, right? So, and, uh, so we have the, the real thing of the of Lord's Supper, and it is claimed that uh, that the that the Da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper has all the disciples there, and you can tell which one was Judas Iscariot, which one was what, and what what they saw that they thought was Mary Magdalene that looked very feminine was actually John the Apostle. <laughs> so, yeah, that was supposed to be the code. So someone looked and said, hey, that is actually not John the Apostle. That is Mary Magdalene. So Da Vinci paint a code trying to tell you, actually that is Mrs. Jesus. <laughs> See, that was supposed to be the code. Nah. So no big deal. And, uh, but no. In the, first, in the first place, none of them actually look exactly the way they were. Can check with the thunder prophet. We got description of what each disciple look like also, and who is the most well dressed, who not so well dressed, and uh, and uh, Peter the fisherman, his style, and uh, and and so Peter the fisherman actually, you know, they used to wear these uh, long garments, and Peter the fisherman like to roll it up and tie it around him like you know the Indians, they had a sarong tie in half one, uh, so that he can move very fast, and uh, so. Uh, so all their dressing is a bit uh, uh, different, and so we have uh, all these interesting times, uh, good times, a eh, prophet, yeah, prophet this thing online. So, and uh, so all these things, 
that that are there uh, are actually telling us uh, that well as far as uh, Jesus was concerned and, uh, and, and Jesus disciple there is no even none of Da Vinci's painting actually are uh, accurately portrayed uh, he as an artist he got what I call an artistic license so he, you know he changed and does things a bit differently and uh, in order in the in those renaissance days to paint uh, in different manner but what we bring forth as we look into uh, all these things in the bible are the 144,000 that are there that uh, in the book of revelation these 144,000 are mentioned they are the ones that are sealed uh, we want to finish off uh, all these uh, uh, major points uh, in the three and a half years in chapter 7 they are sealed their numbers are there and as I mentioned again they are probably second generation today and you can be sure if these are so important Jews they are marked by God their parents will be marked and they will be marked when they are born they have to be born within this period of the church age and uh, who knows, a great many of them might be in Jerusalem or I mean not Jerusalem, I mean Israel and some of them might be outside Israel but at a certain point they will go back to Israel to be just in time for this uh, this great work that God has for them I'm sure they will be sealed during that time and uh, of these uh, 144,000 that are mentioned it says here that uh, during the capturing up of the 144,000 in chapter 14 it says in verse 4 these are the ones who were not defiled with women for their virgins these are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes see their ministry was only about three and a half years that was all that's why they were fully dedicated uh, and, and they chose the single life like the Apostle Paul and in 1st Corinthians chapter 6 Paul did say something Paul himself was single and then Paul says uh, because of the, the times that he's living in he's talking about persecution so in the time of persecution and in the time of the Antichrist and in the time of tribulation they chose to give themselves uh, for the Lord to serve God single and in order to fulfill this great plan that God has for their lives and Paul in 1st Corinthians 6 talks about the gift of God so uh, there are those that uh, have the gift uh, to be married those who have the gift to be single and so there is that special thing that this group 144,000 and I bring it, bring it to us here because we didn't mention much about 144,000 in the teaching uh, in both Revelations earlier so we got to close this part up also and say there are these 144,000 they will be born to uh, to the second generation and uh, most likely they are born to the second generation and uh, that depends if uh, if some of them uh, you know uh, some of them could be if, if they are older fellows in Mount 144,000 who knows they might be also the second, sense, second generation themselves which would mean that some of them might be you know you, you might rub shoulders with them as you travel here and there and uh, these are special group and that's why the third main area to pray for is Israel and to pray for these 144,000 and to pray for their parents who are most likely alive today their parents are alive today and uh, so when you pray for Israel and pray for the Jews to cover this people in prayer it will help and aid the word of the angels uh, when you pray you notice that angels have always been uh, been working to answer the prayers of the saints and as you pray to the father so cover these uh, fathers of the 144,000 only 144,000 in prayer and uh, then the last group that we will consider is the tribulation saints we see here in chapter 7 of the book of Revelations verse 9 
says, after these things, I look and behold a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, and peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving, honour and power and might be to our God forever and ever. And uh, then one of the elders answered, uh, answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? Where do they come from? And you look carefully, they are not from the church age. This is not the church you're looking at. It says here, the reply, verse 14, Sir, you know, John says. So he said, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and wash their robes and make them white in the blood of the Lamb. Be therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple and He who sits on the throne will dwell among them. These are those who never became part of the church age. Because the church is already raptured. And uh, so, uh, we look again at the chart, uh, the uh, summary of the book of Revelation. See, the church is raptured. So, it's only those not raptured that continue into this place. And uh, when they move into here, here is where the Antichrist will reveal himself as a false god and um, then when they move into this uh, area of the tribulation those humans who are alive they accepted Christ but obviously they must have accepted Christ after the rapture so the question is who preached Christ to them? Enoch, Elijah, the 144,000 and we know that they are considered preachers of the gospel. See, in the, in, the, in the book of Revelation, during the tribulation, the gospel is being preached. In chapter 12, chapter 12, when Satan was chasing after the woman, and the woman represents Israel, and she runs to be protected together with the two witnesses in the area of uh, uh, Edom, Moab, and um, uh, uh, in those areas. Uh, which Antichrist will not enter. We see here in chapter 12, uh, verse looking here in verse 13. When the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, where she might fly into the wilderness to a place where she is nourished for time, times, and other times from the presence of the serpent. And uh, in verse 17, uh, when the earth helped the woman, the dragon was enraged with the woman and he ran to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now this is also mentioned here in verse 10. And, uh, verse 10 and 11. Uh, Salvation and strength and the kingdom of God and the power of His Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God, day and night have been cast down, as the devil being cast down. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of the testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. This promise, in a sense, is also for the church, because the principles are the same. But particularly, it was to the tribulations. Now this... Uh, Few passages tell us here that obviously the gospel is still going forth. In chapter 14, verse 6, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. So, in the tribulation period, the gospel is preached by Enoch, Elijah, the 144,000, and anyone who believes them, plus angels are working with them. Angels are working with them. 
and all of them had open vision by that time, and they would be uh, having uh, uh, the last of the harvest of those who did not believe during the church age, but there's a last chance for humanity to accept Christ in the first three and a half years. And that we conclude the first three and a half years that there is still a chance to be saved. But, but many of those who are saved immediately died, got killed. And remember, so many got killed. How many were there? Cannot number. Beyond numbering is that it tells us here that uh, there were so many of them and they were told to wait in chapter 7 until the number of them was complete. So obviously, there is a whole group which is why part of their gospel is is slightly more stronger than us. Uh, although for us, not loving our lives means to put Jesus first. For them not loving our, their lives means they must prepare to die. That's a different. You accept Christ bef before the rapture and before the tribulation, you got a chance uh, to uh, live a holy life, or have a family, have kids, and, and make Jesus the center. Of your, of your family but when they accept Christ they have to be willing to die because the devil and his cohorts go out purposely killing everyone who is not of his mark remember the mark of the beast starts and everyone who refuses his mark get killed and of course they have to refuse his mark and uh, that closes the first three and a half years and uh, in a fortnight's time we look at what happened in the next three and a half years let's go to the garden prayer father we thank you for your grace and your mercy establish oh god your word open our understanding oh god and especially for everyone who hear this word on the book of revelation we know this book, Lord, has to be revealed to the generation that see your coming. And this teaching to Revelation is part of it, Lord. This book full of mysteries must be made clear and simple so that we all understand this last book and get ready for the end times. We ask, oh God, let this message go forth clearly so that everyone who hears this teaching will realize the urgency of the time we live in. And that we will put our heart, our soul, and our mind into being your servant, your slaves, laying all before your altar, dying to self, letting you live through us. That by the blood of the Lamb, you who have cleansed us and brought us by your grace, by the precious blood of the Lamb, O oh Father, you have redeemed us and set us at the right hand. Seated in Christ Jesus. We are grateful. And in this great work of the end times, we ask that more will join this, this group that has this urgency. It doesn't matter from what church, what denomination, what slight differences in beliefs or infrastructure, that all may realize the times that we are living in. These are times, oh God, for us to seriously seek your face, to live our lives to the fullness of the gospel. So let the weight of this message rest on us, Father, and raise the people of prayer, raise the people of worship, raise us to be part of the glorious church. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Let's all rise together and we just pronounce a blessing. And the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make His face shine upon you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace and grace and favor to live the life that Jesus wants you to live. 
In Jesus' name, and everyone say Amen. Give Jesus a good clap offering.